So next I'd like to welcome Professor David Byrne to the stage. So Professor David Byrne is a professor of movement disorder neurology. He is the director of the Institute of Neuroscience at Newcastle University and also the Clinical Aging Research Unit. David is an honorary consultant neurologist within the Newcastle upon Tyne NHS Foundation Trust and also the clinical director for Parkinson's UK. Thank you, Lisa. So I've just been given, I've just been given my instructions there from my trusty wingman to say, make sure you speak right into the microphone. Can you all hear me all right? Excellent. Good. Well, good morning, everyone. So this is a, uh, this is a bit of an interesting one. Professor Rochester has told you about the research overview um, that we're up to. And what I'm actually going to be telling you about is actually more of a service development. So I'm standing here really with my National Clinical Director hat on for Parkinson's UK. So we think national, but obviously some of what I'm saying, well, I hope all of what I'm saying, has got very regional relevance as well. So, gosh, I feel like a pop star here. I'm going to just get this all felt and there you go. Get that up a bit, so that's it. Okay, so Parkinson's UK are really bothered about what people think about their condition and what their priorities are. So they did a huge listening exercise some time ago now to help formulate their research strategy for 2015 to 2019. And the three themes that emerged as the most important thing to people with Parkinson's and their families are on this slide. So. Basically, understandably, people want the sort of thing that Professor Rochester's just talked about, better treatments and ultimately a cure. But also, people want to feel more empowered. They want to feel that they don't just have to rely on that brief outpatient visit every four or six months. They want to be able to know what to do, where to go to, if they hit some problems. And when they're given the diagnosis, they don't want to feel that they've just been thrown overboard with a life raft and no paddle. And then the final element, which is really what I'm on about today, but which clearly interleaves with the other two, is getting the right services. So that's when the Parkinson's Excellence Network comes in. So the UK Parkinson's Excellence Network has got a, an idea. It's basically to create a partnership <coughs> You all know Parkinson's UK have been around for a very long time and they've been trying very hard to represent the interests of people with Parkinson's. But I think this excellence network is a way of trying to redevelop and reinvigorate a relationship with the healthcare professionals as well as strengthening the relationship with people with Parkinson's and giving them a voice. So as I've been talking, you can read the slide to show you the three elements, if you will, of the Excellence Network. And this is a subtle shift in how Parkinson's UK are interacting with healthcare professionals. It is as, as a partnership. And the outputs are being driven by the voice of people with Parkinson's and their carers. So the idea, of course, is to try to generate consistently high quality services right across the UK. Now I would hope that a lot of people in this audience who go to local Parkinson's services would actually think, well, why bother? We've already got a fantastic service, why change it? Now you may have your own horror stories and negative experiences as well, of course. And it's these kind of things that inform the National Parkinson's Audit, which seems a long time ago now, back in 2012, 2013. And Obviously, lots of good practice. I'm not here to tell you about the good bits. I'm here to tell you about where it wasn't so good. So, for example, there are people in the UK who do not have access to a Parkinson's nurse specialist. There are physios out there who want to do well for people with Parkinson's, but don't know how to access the latest guidelines in what they should be telling people with Parkinson's, or indeed how they implement those kind of things. And they would love to work in a joined up way with the neurologist or the geriatrician who's seeing a person with Parkinson's. These were all the kind of things that were highlighted in that audit. So it's a training issue, it's an access issue, it's a joined up in this issue. A lot of that, as you'll gather, is not about costing a lot more money 
It's just actually being more efficient with what we've already got. So basically, the ambition, a lofty ambition, as a couple of people said to Steve Ford, space from Parkinson's regional, um, down at the, um, this, the um, Royal County Hotel, when he did a roadshow about this about a year or two ago, wanted to think about the national, the um, Parkinson's Excellence Network, and the two as we went around the room said, propaganda. So now if you're here, you know who you are, um, and I'm not going to pick on you, you may not be here, but the bottom line is, that I think you've got to start with a lofty ambition. You've got to start with a mission to try and say, right, by 2020, how are things going to be different? And it's supposed to be service quality guaranteed. And by doing that, the idea is to actually remove the postcode lottery, which there still exists in accessing these kind of services. So the vital pieces in the jigsaw for the Parkinson's Excellence Network You'll see the top box there. So very much about, about this one here, about increasing the voice of people with Parkinson's and putting them right in control. So right through every strata, every level of the network, be it national, be it regional, there are people with Parkinson's being involved to try to give us their experience to better inform what's going on. And that is also at multiple levels, both from a group and an individual level, which I'll come back to. We're talking about making sure that professionals can look at a service and enhance it by working with managers and commissioners to actually make sure that their area is not lagging behind everywhere else. We're all in it together, as I said at the start. It's a tripartite agreement between people with Parkinson's, Parkinson's UK and the healthcare professionals working together for a change. And the final one is building an expert workforce. You've got people in the room today that you will be hearing from who also contribute to the clinical service. They are experts in their field, but we need more of them. We need to suck more of the junior doctors, physios, speech and language therapists, OTs, Unit pharmacists, dietitians, it goes on. We want them all to be more skilled up in terms of how to deal with people with Parkinson's. So it doesn't just matter on a flip of the coin whether you go to a clinic who happens to have a physio with a great interest in Parkinson's or they don't. So effective national leadership is critical to this. So the, the take home message, or one of the take home messages, is we want to try and assimilate examples of good practice. There's lots of good ideas out there. What do you do with somebody with Parkinson's when they're admitted to hospital and they have to be nil by mouth for an operation? The number of different guidelines around, the number of different conversion tables, you would not believe. Why not just have one that's really good, that's available for healthcare professionals to tap in on and implement? What happens if somebody's admitted with Parkinson's to a hospital? How does the Parkinson's nurse get to know about that admission? Even that, simple though it sounds, is not so straightforward. And there are multiple different versions of how that might operate. So the idea is to pull in, suck in, assimilate these type of good ideas, evaluate them, and just check with the appropriate people whether these are the right tools, and this one's better than the other. Get it onto a website or a central portal and disseminate it out. So assimilate, evaluate, disseminate. And the idea then is to stop people wasting time and reinventing the wheel. So people who were a little bit skeptical about the Excellence Network should maybe look at this slide. Not so much because I expect you to be able to read font that's about size 0.5 from where you're sitting, but because it's got a number of photos. And the photos against the different regions are the regional leads. There are 18 of them. They're covering Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and also England. They're mapping by and large to strategic clinical networks where they exist. And in addition, the people who are out somewhere between here and the, and the Scandinavia, which of course includes um, Professor Rochester, are leads of what we call thematic groups. So the way of thinking of the network is it's like a two-dimensional matrix. You've got the regional coverage, and in each of those regions, you've got multi-users, multi multi-involvement, people with Parkinson's, physios, OTs, nurses, and so on, they're covering that way. And then the verticals are the people who are up in the North Sea who are actually in charge of themed groups. 
So if we want to know about research happenings, evidence-based practice, new technologies, underserved communities with Parkinson's like nursing homes and ethnic minorities, service development, we would go to one of those groups who would then hopefully be able to feed in across the board. This is established. This is all up and running. Also up and running is a new website that Parkinson's UK have invested a huge amount of time and effort in. And this website is a resource. It's a resource for healthcare professionals and it's also a resource for people with Parkinson's to go to have a look at. It's evolving. It's going to be, we hope, a go-to place where people will pull off the latest guidelines, read about the latest evidence, and can empower and inform their own practice. Now, again, if you think that an awful lot of that is smoke and mirrors, how is it really getting down to the nitty gritty? How is it going to happen here? Well, it's going to happen here and in every other region by a number of ways. Firstly, and a cornerstone of measuring success is through audit. The audit process was around in 2013, as I've showed you. It's just been redone. And the audit that's being redone is effectively serving as a baseline for how are we doing currently before the impact of the Excellence Network. It's, it's been done too early in the game for us to claim any benefits or successes from the impact of the Excellence Network. But what we've built into it is a patient response experience measure, or PREM, and that allows people with Parkinson's to not only just tick boxes on a simple forced choice, but to have free text to say what they think about the service in their area. And we want this coverage to be as wide as possible. Because we think that that is a really good way of highlighting deficiencies. That will then be produced as a report for the regions, and that in turn will be translated into a service improvement plan which they will have to produce from the regions with the help of Parkinson's <coughs> UK to actually then implement improvements in the deficiencies that have been highlighted. We're obviously going to bolster the online resource centre and we've talked about a little bit about that. We've got service improvement advisors in every region and they will be working with the regional leads to try to help in terms of address local issues with the commissioners and we've got a Commissioner's Day lined up next June where the regional leads and others will be encouraged to attend to get to know more about how you engage with that mystical black box of people, the commissioners out there in primary care land who fund services as well, importantly. And obviously we are going to try and encourage people to do things for themselves from the hospital <coughs> side and in primary care if they're willing to listen through service improvement grants. So these will be advertised, there'll be a way of trying to allow people to have limited funding to develop good ideas to feed into the assimilate, evaluate, disseminate cycle. So that's the sort of thing that we're aiming for. So just to reiterate the measuring improvement, we've talked about the audit tool, it's going to be strengthened, we're adding this patient response experience or patient report experience measure. We're looking to capacity build to increase the volume of people out there with expertise in managing folk with Parkinson's. And a very important thing, and it brings us right back to what Lynn was just saying in her previous talk, and in a way I'm now <coughs> preaching to the converted here, that is to engage more people and offer more people with Parkinson's the chance to take part in research. Because Lynn mentioned that the Newcastle upon Tyne Hospitals Foundation NHS Trust is leading the country for recruitment into clinical research network portfolio studies. That is something we're incredibly proud of. But it's not just bean counting. There are academic publications out there that show the trusts that are more research active when you, when you allow for all the other confounding factors, the quality of care that people get in those trusts is better than in trusts that are less research active. So in other words, it's a virtuous circle. The more research active, the better the service quality, the more research active, and so on. So we want more people like you in this room to be offered the chance to participate in research because it drives up service quality as well. Hence the fact we included that as a metric in measuring improvement in the excellence network. So my final slide, our key take-home messages, basically the excellence network 
Its aim is to deliver high quality services for everyone with Parkinson's across the UK. And we want this to be a paradigm of excellence that others in countries in Europe, North America and beyond will look to enviously and look to emulate. I've talked endlessly about innovate, assimilate and disseminate. That's the mantra for how we're going to drive up improvement in a cost neutral way. We're going to, as I say there, try to make the most of it. We know there are limited resources by trying to help through education as well reduce inefficiencies and make sure that we get best practice implemented right across the whole country. And then finally, what I'd really like for people, particularly the healthcare professionals, is when they get an email from Parkinson's UK and the, about the Excellence Network, that they don't look at it when it comes to directing them to the platform and think, no, that's one of many emails, I could just click delete on that one. We want it where they would look at that and think, this is going to be interesting, because the last thing was really helpful, they'll click on the link and they'll go to it, and better still, they'll contribute to it themselves so that they're actually an equal partner. So it's a lofty ambition. We're just setting off on the journey. I'm absolutely convinced we will make progress. We want to hear from you if there are problems locally, because clearly if we can't put the house in order in our own backyard, then I really am not going to feel that I've got the mandate to stand up nationally and preach about this either. So thanks very much for listening.